Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate wages uh, using the uh, setting up a proportion method, which is the main method we're using for most things in this class. Uh, but first of all, before we jump into wages, one thing I should point out is that there's two ways that people are paid. Uh, we're going to be focusing on wages today, which is uh, money earned per hour. The other way people get paid is salaried, which is money earned per year. And there are advantages and disadvantages to each. Salaried is nice in that you are generally guaranteed how much money you're going to get every week or every month. But salaried also means you usually don't get paid if you work extra hours. So if you're in a job where you're going to be asked to work lots of overtime, you might end up earning less money if you're salaried than if you were an hourly employee. So hourly pay is how most people are paid. It's called wages. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. And our next lesson, we're going to be learning about something called overtime, and that's earning extra money if you earn more than your usual hours. Wages can be stable. Some people have contracts that say the number of hours they have per week, but most people just have a, a shift schedule that shows how many hours they're going to get each week. And so a disadvantage of hourly pay is not necessarily knowing how much you're going to earn each week. So that's sort of the difference, the big differences between wages and salaries. And if you've got more questions about that, uh, feel free to shoot me a question and I'm happy to give you some answers on it. But anyway, let's go into how to actually calculate how much you get paid. So Jade works as an electrician and she earns $24.68 per hour. It takes her 15 hours for one job. How much will she earn? Now, wages are a unit rate. So if you're confident with unit rates, you can always multiply your unit rate by your hours. I'm going to show you guys a more general way of solving this, which is called setting up a proportion. And when we get to some later questions, we'll see partly why the setting up a proportion is a really powerful skill. This hourly pay is going to be our rate. That is $24.68 per one hour. And so this is going to be dollars up top, hours underneath as a rate. Now we know that they are paid for 15 hours. So we're going to match our hours and hours underneath. And our pay, our pay is our unknown. So that's going to go up top. All we need to do, cross multiply. So we multiply the two numbers on the diagonal that we know, divide by the number outside. In this case, as with all unit rates, dividing by one doesn't actually change anything. So effectively, all that we need to do is 2468 times 15 in your calculator, and you get x equals, um, oops, sorry, 370.2. Now since this is money, we should never just leave one decimal place. We need to turn that into $370.20. Next question, same idea, except now we've got this 15 minutes. So, uh, actually let's do this underneath. In our last lesson, we learned how to turn our 15 minutes into decimal hours. If you like, you can set up this proportion, 60 minutes per one hour is 15 minutes per our unknown. And that's one way that we can solve this 15 minutes and turn it into decimal hours. And sure enough, after you convert, you're going to get 0 0.25 hours. All right, so Marcus works in a restaurant. He earns 15.65 per hour. What will he earn in six hours and 15 minute shift if he also gets $35 in tips? So the 15 minutes is going to make our hours 6.25 hours, as we've just said. So we're going to set up our proportion with our hourly pay, $15.65 per one hour, is an unknown amount of pay for our 6.25 hours. Cross, multiply, and divide. And we get that our pay is 97.8125. Now again, this is money. Money, we don't get to keep all those decimal places. We are going to only round it there. The two after means we're going to round down to $97.81. And that's his hourly pay. But the question also says that he gets $35 in tips. So that's just $35 straight up that he gets. So we're going to add the $35 
to the 9781, and that gives us a total of $132.81. This last example really highlights why the proportion method is so powerful. So let's read it and figure out why. Rachel wants to buy a PS5, which costs $750. How many hours will she need to work at $13.50 per hour to buy the console? And a bonus question, we'll turn that into hours and minutes at the end. So if you're used to using the unit rate method where you just multiply your unit rate by your hours, that doesn't really work for this question. So you could figure it out, you could figure out you need to divide, but if you set up your proportion the same every single time, it ends up not being a different question at all. You can actually use the exact same method we use in every single question so far, except instead of our hours being what we know, in this case, we know the money that we want to get. So the 750 goes up top, and the hours are unknown. So once you set up your proportion, all you need to do is cross multiply and divide the other way. 750 times 1 uh, divided by 13.5, you plug into your calculator and you get x is 55.555 repeating hours. So there we go, there's your decimal number of hours, 55.555. Now if we want to get fancy and turn this into hours and minutes, we can just set up a proportion. I'm guessing none of you have 0.555 repeating hours memorized. I know that I didn't. So you're probably going to need to set up 60 minutes per one hour as your proportion. Our minutes are unknown. And our hours are going to be 0 0.5555. Remember again, the 55, the 55 hours is already hours. So we don't need to convert that. It's only the 0.555 that we need to convert. And so it's the 0.555 we plug in here. Now when I get to cross multiply and divide, the way you do repeating digits in your calculator, if you just put in 0.5 or just put in 0.55, or even if you round it, put in 0.56, you're going to get actually the wrong answer. What you want to do is you want to actually just sit and mash 0.55555 in your calculator for a little while until you get bored, I don't know, 12, 15 times, whatever when you're plugging this into your calculator, and that will give you the exact value. So if you plug it into your calculator correctly, and you do 60 times 0.5555555555 till you get bored, uh, divided by one, doesn't matter in this case, but divided by one, you will get x equals 33. And that is minutes. So our total then is going to be our 55 hours and our 33 minutes. And there you go. Rachel's going to need to work 55 hours and 33 minutes to afford that PS5. Now the next page is a whole set of practice questions, so I encourage you to go through those right now. Um, if you want, when I originally printed this, the last line had a, a duplicate question. So if you want on your last line, you can do this bonus question instead. And in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to do overtime pay.